one of the biggest things that I see is the lies that we tell ourselves, mm. right? So our self-talk is so important as we begin to elevate and it can either build your confidence or yeah. tear it down. So one of the things that I see, particularly in most of my clients, is our self-talk. Mm. What are you saying to yourself and then what are you believing about what you've said, wow. right? Um, so really when we talk about shifting our mindset and we talk about um, how to, to, to evolve, it's really what are you saying to yourself? right I can tell you you're phenomenal you're amazing yeah. right but if you don't believe that for mm -hmm. yourself and you're in the mirror every day or you're waking up and like oh my god I feel awful I feel this I feel that that's what you're believing and that's yeah. how you're showing up so when we talk about shifting our mindset is what are you saying to yourself what's the conversation you're having with yourself and the lies you're telling yourself Welcome back to the She Inspires podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Jade, board certified family medicine physician, wellness and weight loss specialist, owner of the membership medical practice, Inspire Primary Care. And I am so excited about our interview today with a special guest who's coming back to the podcast, our first repeat podcaster, okay, podcast interview. Coach Amber J, my CEO coach, we talked on episode four. Check it out. It's one of our most popular episodes about life coach lessons. But today I really wanted to talk about confidence in being a CEO or entrepreneur. Today our topic is confidence is key. Coach Amber J, a certified lifestyle coach. I call her my CEO coach. I know some other clients I've seen have called you their confidence coach. So your your you know clients just call you different things. But welcome back to the podcast and tell us, reintroduce to the people, to the She Inspires fam, who you are and what you do. Awesome. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you for having me back. I love, love, love this whole setup in the podcast. But yes, I'm Coach Amber J. I could just call myself a life a life coach, um, but I have been told CEO, life coach, confidence coach. Um, and I just help women, especially professional women, create that successful work-life balance mm -hmm. and doing it in style. Yes. So showing up, being beautiful, being amazing, and doing what you love to do in your greatness. Mm -hmm. So co confidence coach, CEO, we're all bosses trying to be amazing. And so, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Thank so you. we're talking about confidence is key today. And I wanted to start off by defining confidence because this can look different for different people. It can mean something different to different people. So I went to our friend chat GPT and I'm going <laughs> to read y'all with the definition of what they said confidence means. OK, and I liked their definition. It says confidence is a state of self-assurance and belief in one's abilities, qualities, and judgment. It involves a sense of trust in oneself and the capacity to handle challenges, make decisions, and set goals with a positive outlook. Some key components that they mentioned with confidence include self-belief, resilience, assertiveness, adaptability, and optimism, and that confidence is dynamic and can be developed and strengthened through experienced self-reflection and continuous effort. Yes. So I really liked this definition, right? Because really first of all, good. they mentioned that it's dynamic. It's not one thing. Like you're going to just get confident and be confident your whole life. Yeah. Each stage I've noticed as an entrepreneur, each stage I'll be like, man, I thought I was confident, but I'm feeling insecure again. Yeah. You know, now this new level, I thought I could speak, but now I feel insecure speaking. I thought I could, you know, talk yeah. about my offer, but now I feel a little insecure at this next level. So what do you think about that definition and what things have you seen with your clients when it comes to confidence? and entrepreneurship and business? I think that's like the well best um, answer that I heard of in confidence because it is, right? It's building that resilience. Yeah. It's making decisions. It's setting goals. Um, so like you said, it's not just one thing. Yeah. And as we are growing, right, it's like we have to build a new confidence in each area, each each time in my in our lives and I feel like a lot of times we need that confidence but sometimes we have to go back to yeah. the very beginning of what is confidence in this season and where do I need to build the growth the resilience the structure the yeah. strategy so I think it says an overall of just constantly evolving and growing and and learning how to be confident but when I really think about confidence for myself it's really learning me who am I and constantly going within myself and showing up mm -hmm. right and I think a lot of times especially as CEOs and entrepreneurs we forget to take a moment to go back into us and and understand okay who am I again what am I called to do where am I yeah. at 
in spite of just the elevation, but like going back to you. So when I think of confidence, I think of seeing and reflecting and looking within myself and then showing up that way. Absolutely. And what I love about them saying that it's dynamic is that it's every different season. And so it's not in my mind, just like, well, who am I, but who am I in this season? Yes. And who am I, you know, who I was before I had children is different from when I was pregnant is different right. from now that I have two children is different now that I've transitioned back to my healthy weight and I'm feeling like myself again. Yeah. Like each time it's this self-reflection so, that's happening where it's yeah. like, okay, let me rediscover the Jade in this season and yes. how we need to show up in this season. So I love that. I love that too. Like rediscovering ourselves every season mm-hmm. and it makes you actually realize how much growth you've had. Right. Yeah. Um, and it allows you to even give yourself the grace and the praise to continue to go on this journey, right. Of yeah. growing and being confident in each season, yeah. but it gives you room to measure. Okay. I have area to grow in this area. Yeah. I've conquered a little bit of this, but now let me continue to grow. So yeah. yeah. So why do you think one of your clients refers to you as her confidence coach? So we actually, um, so one of the things that I do with the, as a coach as well is help brand and image and shopping and image mm-hmm. and wardrobe. So this particular client, we actually had a shopping um, day together. Yes. And she was very nervous, very anxious. She had just had a baby. So, mm-hmm. again, finding your 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 new self in exactly. this phase of after having a baby. And it was such a seamless experience. And she left feeling so good about herself and her new body. Mm-hmm. Right. And she had a new perspective on shopping. Yeah. And she's like, oh, my God, I haven't felt this good since I had the baby. And yes. I didn't know that in this new my new body, like I would feel confident. And so I think that was that experience experience that um that created that building like this is my confidence coach I love it (laughs) and I love that your coaching is not just business coaching which we do together right but also you have that wardrobe component where you know even before this podcast you know content day we looked at looks and shout out to coach Amber J all the looks you see you know we picked out (laughs) together but we look at the shoes we look at the hair we talk about the hair and makeup we talk about you know the outfit and the accessories that really reflect the brand that's going to make you feel the most confident right Right. and your most authentic self in this season for your what you're doing and so I love that part of your your business and and it really does help with the confidence and so let's talk about mindset shifts because I think when it comes to confidence there are different mindset shifts we need especially in different seasons of life absolutely and so what would you say about confidence and the mindset shifts needed that you've noticed when it comes to confidence as an entrepreneur one of the biggest things that I see is the lies that we tell ourselves, mm. right? So our self-talk is so important as we begin to elevate and it can either build your confidence or yeah. tear it down. So one of the things that I see, particularly in most of my clients, is our self-talk. Mm. What are you saying to yourself and then what are you believing about what you've said, wow. right? Um, so really when we talk about shifting our mindset and we talk about um, how to, to, to evolve, it's really what are you saying to yourself? right we I can tell you you're phenomenal you're amazing right but if you don't believe that for Mm -hmm. yourself and you're in the mirror every day or you're waking up and like oh my god I feel awful I feel this I feel that that's what you're believing and that's how you're showing up so when we talk about shifting our mindset is what are you saying to yourself what's the conversation you're having with yourself and the lies you're telling yourself I love that because just for full transparency to give a specific ex- or a specific example of this, like even in our coaching together, you know, I had been saying to myself, man, in this season of scaling and really growing the business and hiring a team, I've been like, man, this is hard, man, this is challenging, man. And you were like, okay, let's change the verbiage. Yeah. You know, this is a season where you're being stretched. Yeah. This is a season where, you know, it's a season of discomfort. Yeah. And so even <laughs> just telling myself like, no, this is not hard. No, this does not suck. No, this is not. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. What's that I feel? I'm being stretched. Yeah. Okay, that's a good thing. That's called growth. And yeah. discomfort comes with that. And so I love that. And I've needed that too. You, I think people look at people on socials and things and they assume they have it all together. 
but each new level, you really are developing a new version of yourself and are yeah. acquiring new skills. And a different version of yourself has to be reborn to handle that new level. Yes. And there's some insecurity that comes when you're in a new room and a new level and a new tax bracket. Like yes. it doesn't, yes. it doesn't stop. Yeah. It's just a new version, a new version, yeah. a new level. You said it mm-hmm. well. Like, um, I always think about it. Like when we start school, right. You, you go to, let's say high school, you start off in the ninth grade, you're at the lowest rank. And then finally you get to the 12th grade Mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I got this damn pack. But now you go to college and you're back at your freshman year. So it's like, we're constantly going through cycles of starting from the beginning Mm -hmm. to conquering it. And then every level, like you said, it requires something different. It requires a little bit more, but if we can keep the basic foundations, right. Um, My self talk, right. My morning routines, Mm -hmm. my self care, my self love, like those, those foundational things don't change, mm-hmm. right? And they just constantly will change as far as the conversations, but the keys need to be implemented all the time. And sometimes we yes. just need to be reminded, you're just at a, you're just at the beginning again, but right. you got this. Let's use those same keys so that you continue to grow and evolve. And what's been helpful for me when I think about my business, especially because I had my baby, Aaliyah, two months before so the business was eight weeks or she was eight weeks old when we opened the business right so literally my business inspire primary care and Aaliyah are the same age Uh. and so (laughs) as I'm seeing her grow and develop like you know when we opened the business there was all this excitement because my business was an infant and it's like oh I love the new baby I love it it's amazing and you're really caring for it and spoon feeding it and then now I'm like huh this is different now that we're established and we're growing the stretching comes because now the business isn't an infant it's a toddler yes. and I'm looking at my toddler Aaliyah and I'm like okay so she's walking but she's stumbling a little bit now she's running but she doesn't know that she can hurt herself yeah. so and there's just I'm like okay when I think of it like my business is an infant and the things that I need to the way I need to care for it and love it and nurture it is different than yeah. when it's going to be a teenager and right. when it's going to be a grown adult yeah. and so I love that too yeah and even I was going to say like even her being a toddler now there's an independence that mm-hmm. come where it's like oh they don't need hands on right now yes. right they don't need to be spoon fed it's yes. running itself oh my god yes. you know and I think sometimes we forget to look at that too mm-hmm. as growth happens it's like, okay, I can kind of take my hands off of this. Right. And it's going to be okay. Like, mm-hmm. everything is okay. You know, yes. the baby's okay. Absolutely. Right? And that comes with the confidence of delegating, which yeah. we've talked a lot about together is like, no, you don't need to do every single task. Yes. You have a team that helps with that now. Delegate that because it's a toddler now. It's not yeah, an infant it's now. Right. <laughs> and, so, and there's a certain level of confidence that has to come with that confidence yeah. in I've I've created a framework and this isn't an infant anymore. Okay. In the hands and, and the trusting you, right? Yeah. Like I trust that what I've built already in this and the, the tools I've given them, yeah. it's going to work. Yeah. So I know that I can give it away and it's going to be okay, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So let's talk about strategies and techniques. When you think about strategies and techniques for confidence as a CEO, what advice do you have? So I would say, um, and they go hand in hand even with our personal lives, is having those systems, right? Mm -hmm. Having um, a schedule, right? A personal schedule as Mm -hmm. well as a professional schedule. Um, I think something that I admire a lot about you and we've talked about is the boundaries that you create in that. Those are the techniques that you need to be able to have to continue to run the business as well as run your professional life. Right. So I would say um, schedules, routines, Mm -hmm. boundaries. Boundaries are key to the success of your business as well as your professional life. Love that. Love that. Yes. I've become really good with boundaries, really good with my nose. But these are things I, I think of it like a muscle, like, I tell I have a friend of mine who's like, man, I have a really hard time saying no. And I'm like, I'm really good at saying no yeah. now. But there was a season where it was really a challenge, but I've built my no muscle. Yeah. And it's like, oh, I said no. And we all survived it. And I felt better. OK, now let's let's use that thing again. again yeah. And so I was like, man, it's building a muscle and the confidence, and the confidence. behind that. Yeah. To be like, I'm saying no 
to actually care for myself. I'm saying no. So the things I'm saying yes to, I can show up as my full self yeah. and not my exhausted self and present and present. Yeah. Yes. Being in those moments. Yes. Yeah. So ooh, I love that. I love <laughs> yeah. that. And so what about specific habits that you think about like daily habits that can help when it comes to confidence with entrepreneurs? I would say the first conf- one of the habits that need to be created is your morning routine, mm-hmm. right? Um, how you care for yourself first. Yeah. And I know it's kind of like a mindset shift is like, if I take care of me first, then I can take care of everyone else. A lot of times we've taken care of everyone else and then we think about ourselves. Mm-hmm. But if you can get into a routine of you, taking care of you first, yeah. that morning or setting aside that time for whatever that morning is, if it's drinking coffee, if it's exercising, if it's praying, um, giving yourself even five minutes, like this is me time to fill my cup up Mm -hmm. is such a vital role in building your your business um and not feeling exhausting so i would say the first thing is definitely your your morning routine it it makes a huge impact what is your morning routine coach (laughs) so um (laughs) one of my morning routines is before i get out of bed is just gratitude and prayer Mm -hmm. like that's so important to me is to give thanks for waking up today um and then once i'm up I have my younger, my boys, so take them to school and then I go walk or Mm -hmm. I go on a hike, right? Those have become like my Mm non-negotiables for me to be okay. Yes. Um, And then even when I'm driving to, once I drop them off driving, I'm just sitting in just gratitude, like Mm -hmm. so thankful for this morning, thankful that I don't have to rush, right? Um, And having that schedule, setting that time, making sure I'm getting up at the right time and I'm not sleeping in or ignoring my alarm clock Mm -hmm. because these have now become my non-negotiables. I love it. I love it. And I've shared quite a bit on my social medias and on the podcast that my my morning routine is prayer and Peloton. And so but I've added in gratitude as a new part that I've added in. So I look at my top three things that I'm grateful for for the day. And then I go and I have 20 minutes or so of prayer or a daily devotional, some time with God. And then I go to my workout room and I do typically a Peloton, either strength exercise or uh, or a bike exercise. So some sort of cardio with resistance training. And my husband and I have an agreement that if it's before 7 a.m., do not let the kids come downstairs because that's yeah, still that's within good. my self-time window. So I make sure that, that I'm, up by, is yeah, I'm up by 5, <laughs> 5.30, and I know that once – Six fifty nine and a half hits. <laughs> I'm gonna hear those little feet coming down the stairs, yeah. and it's okay. But right up till seven a.m. It's, it's my your time. time. Yeah, and doesn't it make such a huge difference? And even how you're like able to be like, oh my god, the babies are here. Yes. You know, post like, oh my, you exactly. know, that exhausted or overwhelmed mm-hmm. or just impatient feeling. Yes. So even for me, like, I, there was a couple of days I missed my morning routine, and it just threw my whole week off. Mm-hmm. And so I've like really been like, these are non negotiable for yes. me. Like whatever happens, this has to happen for Absolutely. me first, so that I can show up successfully present and be able to give all that I give. Right. Um, But I have to give it to me first. Yeah. Fill your cup and serve others from the overflow. That's one of my favorite quotes. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about challenges and setbacks because these are going to happen and they can shake our confidence. Yes. So what advice do you have for CEOs and for your clients when it comes to how to maintain the confidence when you're going through seasons of challenges and setbacks so I would say for me I've faced many obstacles um but because I know who I am right uh in that morning routine even when my morning routines are shaking I still have in my mind like this is who I have to be Mm -hmm. right so I am no longer able to not be her yeah um and really defining who is she Mm -hmm. right um but learning to pivot through those times right maybe this is not working for you in this moment or you don't have access or resources, but I can still show up as her. So creating this, this version of me and her being non-negotiable, no Mm -hmm. matter what the obstacle is. So what is your end goal and knowing, having that at the forefront of your mind and no matter what comes along, this is my end goal and I have to pivot, right? I have to pivot no matter what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So really coming where there's no excuses, right? Right. Um, And, and, telling myself in that again our self-talk right that self-talk who I am is non-negotiable I know who I am I know I can overcome I know this is only temporary Um, so I would say definitely using self-talk and affirmations to Mm -hmm. continue to 
help you pivot through obstacles. Yeah. One interesting thing that I've been doing this season to overcome the stretched season yeah. and the <laughs> season of discomfort that comes with scaling a business is actually taking a break and yeah. rest. And that is so much harder for me than going. Yeah. Like I can go, I can do a to-do list. I can power through. I don't even remember that I haven't eaten all day because I can grind. Like medical training has trained me to grind. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what I am not a professional in is resting yeah. and taking a break and saying, you know, it's okay to have no schedule today. You know, That's you're good. overwhelmed. It's okay. If you don't go live today, yeah. uh, it's okay. If you don't post that reel today, now I'm still doing having a strategy and structure and growing the business. We're not going to, you know, it's not the confidence of, I don't feel like it. Right. Right. But if my body is saying I need rest to actually respond that to rest. that. Yeah. And so that's been a really great part of what I'm incorporating intentionally in this season to overcome a stretched season, season of discomfort. Of yes. You know, it's interesting you said too, because there's a time that I even in my schedule, I put nap time. Right. Yeah. Um, where I scheduled in that rest time. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we may have to do that, especially if you're scaling and you know this is a season you're being stretched and you can feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes taking a 15 minute nap can make your day look so different. Right. Yeah. So even like you said, rest is so important. And even thinking about it, you get a lot of revelations downloads ideas when you do rest yes, right yes. so maybe this is an obstacle but if you sit and take a moment to breathe and take a break you'll get an idea how to pivot through that yes. or have a different answer or a different angle to address it so Absolutely. I would definitely say rest is a huge a huge factor take a nap <laughs> I love that you said that that's when downloads can happen because sometimes if we have so much noise going on around us like the thing we've been crunching our minds to figure out it's just because there's so many distractions. So recently I did a spa day with my husband, Carlos, and we both in our quiet time had so much that God just yeah. had the time to really just give us without distractions and noise. Yeah. And I left that spa day with like so many ideas, but rejuvenated because I wasn't working on them. Right. But I was just hearing and being and being like, Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Inspired. And I was being <laughs> inspired. Yes. Inspired in the spa, honey. Yes. Okay, we need to make that happen regularly. But yeah. I love this. So imposter syndrome. We recently had an episode about imposter syndrome on the podcast. But what advice would you have about imposter syndrome or self-doubt when it comes to entrepreneurs? That's a big one. And I think that imposter syndrome happens very often yeah. as you're scaling because, again, I I'm big on this self-talk. Yes. Um, a lot of times it's like I need to be something different. Mm. Right. And I think that's where we we create this illusion yes. or a lie we've told ourselves to show up. Yeah. Um, so I think facing imposter syndrome, one of the keys I would use is being honest with yourself. Mm. You know, be honest with you. No one knows what they don't know. And yeah. I think sometimes we think like, oh, people can tell I'm having a bad day. So let me put a smile on. And yes. it's like no one knows what they don't know. Right. right? Um, so I think, again, I'm huge on our self-talk. Like that will help you a lot with being honest with yourself. Yeah. And then being just being honest with yourself. Yeah. Like you said, I need a break today. So mm -hmm. let me step back, take a moment yeah. and then show up instead of trying to press through and show up to events or do these things. It's OK to say no and not show up today. Yeah. Yeah. The self-talk is definitely key. The breaks are definitely key for me as well. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to imposter syndrome, for me, it's really just been reminding myself of who God has called me to be. That's and so, too. of course, I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. And so getting in my words, spending more time That's with good. God has been like, oh, yeah, this is who I am. That's good. This, this yeah. reminds me of who I really am and why I really do it. Yeah. And that's been helping to that's recharge really as good. well. Yeah. And so how have you been balancing business and wellness lately? Um, taking breaks. Okay. Um, I was just talking to someone about, you know, I used to network everywhere and go to every event and try to support yes. everyone. You were everywhere. Everywhere. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I've really been intentional about where I'm going, where I'm spending my time mm -hmm. and allowing myself, my nose to be nose. Yeah. Um, and being okay if I don't show up. Yes. So I would say definitely just taking a step back and relaxing. Yeah. And doing nothing. 
<laughs> and I think people think that taking a step back means taking a step down as far as, you know what I yeah. mean? Back and down are two different directions. Very different. Okay? <laughs> yes. And so I love that we can elevate to a n- new level while taking a step back. Yes. And the visual of that and the beauty of that. And I've been really leaning Embracing into that too. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It really helps too because when you take a step back, you get to look at the full picture yes. again, right? Sometimes when we're hands are in it and we're in the middle of mm-hmm. it, we don't see certain angles. Absolutely. But taking a step back allows you to kind of reflect, restructure, recharge, regroup. Yes. And then it's like, okay. All right. We got this. Yeah, we got yes. this. <laughs> so I think this has been such an amazing conversation about confidence and how to apply keys of confidence, <laughs> confidence keys for entrepreneurs and CEOs. So where can the She Inspires fam find you on socials to stay in touch? Everything is Coach Amber J. All um, right. So you can find me at Coach Amber J. And if you're ready to, and maybe you need someone to help you, give you accountability, you can also go to my website at Coach Amber J dot com and book a consultation absolutely thank you again for being a woman who truly inspires and thank you for being on the podcast again (laughs) thank you for having me yay and i hope you all enjoyed this episode of the she inspires podcast please join our fam at dr jade md let us know how you enjoyed this episode and i look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the she inspires podcast